Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog or Carnage Vlog now because we're kind of doing the Summer of Carnage. And this is another part of our Carnage Week videos because I wanted to do the Jerry Conway series, uh, you know, the series written by Jerry Conway that lasted about 15 or 16 issues that was just called Carnage. And it kind of follows, you know, the adventures of Cletus Cassidy after, you know, Axis and Deadpool versus Carnage and all those stories where now Carnage is out of jail. He's been, you know, he broke out and he's kind of on the run right now and kind of free. And it's him looking for his next, you know, big massacre, I guess, in a way. And it actually, uh, the next big massacre actually brings him back to one of his first massacres uh, at the St. Estes Boys, uh, you know, School of Orphans and stuff. Like, he actually finds that there was a survivor, uh, a young girl that survived that whole experience, another child that was, uh, I guess, there at the time. And so they call this story the one that got away. And so it's him kind of looking for her. And then it turns into this other you know like thing where there's like special agents uh this lady named agent dixon and then you have eddie brock returns as toxin but kind of like the agent venom thing um they have him they have the, the toxin suit inside of him and only when they release like certain pheromones or you know dopamine hits or something to his brain does that allow the suit to take over so they kind of have eddie brock under control or toxin under control um and so he's in the story and then obviously you have john jameson as well and this lady named manuela and so there's all these new characters and some old characters that are all being brought in to kind of hunt down cletus cassidy and so the story actually doesn't start in carnage number one though it starts in a marvel point one issue that came out that have features like a version of the maestro which is like an evil you know smart uh, hulk character and he's like from a multiverse and it's setting up this multiverse story there's even a, a venom like where they say oh we found an eddie brock that actually killed his spider-man and now he wears Spider-Man's shirt around his neck like a, almost like a cape. And he's running around. I think we've talked about this version of Venom before on the show. And it's him running around and he's talking to the costume, the, the Spider-Man costume, as if it was like a real being. And so that's like someone that the maestro is keeping an eye on and who he eventually has battle stick who has been resurrected, uh, and that's Stick from the Daredevil comics. And the, you know, the Stick in this version of Venom actually fight. So there's little Venom action in there, but in this Marvel Point One, they kind of brush over where Cletus Cassidy is. So the maestro kind of has a, a certain interest in maybe what Cletus is doing um, and then decides, I guess, not to recruit him for whatever this battle or war is that he's doing. So he kind of stays away from Cletus. But here we see Cletus broken out now and go in and like, you know, hunting down people and just killing people at random. And then we find this Agent Dixon lady going to recruit John Jameson, who is out in the middle of Afghanistan or somewhere like that. And he's uh, he's testing this new sound weapon equipment that his uh, that is being developed. And he's like testing it out in the field. And now that they see it works, they decided that they're going to spring a trap for carnage. And so that's what this point one issue kind of sets up is that whole thing where we see how the sound device works. We see carnage, you know, um, you know, going to a diner and basically the setup for what the main series is going to be. And so that's where we go. So from there, from that point one issue, we get into the actual comic book written by Jerry Conway with art by Mike Perkins. The art in this book is great. I love Mike Perkins. He did stuff for, I think, The Stand when Marvel was doing a version of The Stand, the Stephen King book. And he's drawn other, you know, really great things for Marvel too. He's a phenomenal artist. And Jerry Conway's a classic writer. He's he's really great. Did a lot of classic Spider-Man stories and has written over the years and still writes to this day. And I think he's a tremendous writer. And I think the two of them are a good pair on this character overall. And um, I think they, like, they're pretty good at the Cletus Cassidy scenes. And they're pretty good at some of the John Jameson stuff. So, like, it seems they have a grasp on all these characters, even the new ones. They give them, like, very clear motivations and intentions. Uh, we have this guy named Gleason who is kind of working with... Um, the, the special agents to help set up this trap. He like owns a mining facility um, in West Virginia that is closing down. It looks like he's gonna go bankrupt. And it turns out Gleason has a secret and we're gonna get to that here in a little bit. Um, and obviously we're gonna talk about spoilers. So if you don't wanna know anything from this, go read the book yourself and definitely come back. But um, I think overall, I like this. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of it, I did like it, but I also didn't like parts of it. Like, I like the idea of Carnage finding out that one of his early massacres, before he was even Carnage, like in the days of Cletus Cassidy, he finds out that someone lived. And now he's like, okay, I want to go find that person and kill them. I think that in and of itself is a neat story. 
Then when they started adding in the special agent stuff, uh, I like John Jameson, fine. I even like the character of uh, Dixon, fine. Like, she's a fine character. And then Eddie Brock is like, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm on the path of redemption. I, you know, I've, I've gone too far. And as Toxin, I'm trying to, you know, uh, rebuild myself as a better person, get back to my, like, more heroic type days. Of course, to him, he was heroic, but he was obviously more anti-heroic. Um, and so he's like, I'm trying to rebuild myself. But Honestly, Eddie Brock can't really be trusted. He keeps saying, like, release the toxin symbiote. Let me loose. Let me go do this. And they're like, no, we don't want you. We, we're going to use you as a last-ditch effort, which they do in the book. So you get some cool toxin versus carnage battles with Eddie and Cletus. Um, but not really. You also get some cool Jameson, like, as Man-Wolf battles with Cletus. Because now that Jameson is free of the gem, somehow it's, his body is still was affected by the gem so he can still turn into Man-Wolf, you know, which is something they develop in this story. So it's cool to see him again. You get some good werewolf versus, uh, you know, uh, fights with Cletus, Cassidy, and Carnage. But I don't know, like, there was something about this story that I just didn't like. Like, I, I think I liked the, the personal touch of, like, hey, we have this person who survived. And I guess I was kind of hoping they would go in, like, a I don't know, like a horror direction, almost like a, a, a Friday the 13th or even a Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street, where it's like Carnage coming back to like get his revenge. And it's like this sole person, like, you know, in a, a certain environment, um, maybe she's ready for Carnage. Maybe she booby traps her house, kind of like Jamie Lee Curtis in the recent Halloween movie. I was kind of thinking along those lines would be really neat. And maybe I wanted more of that. Um, you know, obviously I'm from West Virginia, so I like the setting of a, a mine shaft in West Virginia. So they could have kept some of that, and maybe she still could have been betrayed by this Gleason guy. But there was something about bringing in the agents that it just felt weird to me. And they were really just there to be fodder, and maybe that's what they wanted. They were like, well, we need a body count for Cletus. I think you could have still had that with mine workers and stuff um, if you just wanted a body count. But bringing in the agents stuff, like, they literally are ineffectual against, <laughs> like, carnage. Like... They, they come in, talk a big game, they bring their weapons, they brought Toxin, they brought Man-Wolf, but nothing really works. They set up this trap, nothing really works. They do get double-crossed by Gleason, like I said. Turns out he was going bankrupt, he made a deal, he's working with this cult, and they wanted to help the you know FBI and stuff lure Carnage there because they needed Carnage for some prophecy. So the Darkhold, apparently, has been buried somewhere in this mine, and that's what Gleason and his cult were looking for, and they found it and built a ritual and an altar and everything down in the mines, and they're basically leading Carnage down there. Um, so they're double-crossing the FBI and have their own purpose. So when Cletus gets to the bottom, he sees all these cult members, and they're like, yeah, we need the, you know, we need you to uh, bleed on the altar and bleed on this book to kind of, you know, help uh, kickstart this prophecy where this Cthulhu-type monster is going to come back and, and, and purge the world and cleanse the world. Um, and so that's kind of the story, and they need Carnage for it. But Carnage kind of disrupts it because his his blood is not what they thought it was like you know they think it's the blood of cletus cassidy is what they need but cletus's blood is carnage i don't know how this cult didn't know that I, like you know you would think they would do their research and stuff uh at, with all this to make sure the prophecy comes true but they didn't they were just like oh if we make cletus cassidy bleed on this book we'll be fine but cletus's blood is carnage right they're bonded completely on a cellular level so when he bleeds on the book, it's carnage blood on it too. And it corrupts everything and it changes what the prophecy said was going to happen. And it changes Cletus and carnage itself. And he starts developing new powers and he uh, is able to, um, you know, create like drones, like, you know, carnage drones and stuff. And, uh, and, and kind of uh, builds kind of an army again, like what he did in minimum carnage when he had all the little carnages and what he tried to do in carnage USA, where he was trying to rebuild a family in that village. Now he can kind of infect these cult members and turn them into like a symbiote type carnage offspring type things and so that's kind of what the story is and what's going on and so i don't know like it, it's it seems neat and there's elements of it i liked and like i said i really like the idea of just like this one person having to try to survive against carnage like i would love to see a story with billy Benteen again like his childhood friend doing something like that since kind of billy got away he wasn't you know still not killed by carnage as far as i remember um and then this lady here from St. Estes. I'm like, what a great way to tie into the origins of Carnage. So I thought they were going to explore and reveal more about St. Estes and, and kind of peel back, the, again, more personal stuff. And it didn't feel like that. And it just felt like, okay, that's the setup, but now I want to do this Darkhold story with Carnage, with this prophecy, and I want to kind of take Carnage in that direction. So it's not about like where he comes from, even though there's these elements that link directly to his past where we could have learned more about his past. Instead of going down that route, they decided to go forward and I, I don't know if i like that too much maybe the next few volumes will will 
deviate and go back and tell more from this girl's point of view of like what it was like to be in the incident where St. Estes got burned down. Like maybe there's something there to tell later, but I guess I was kind of hoping for a little bit of that up front to tease that. And we didn't get any of that. So overall, I didn't, I liked and didn't like this book. I, I felt like it set up to where it felt like it was going to be a personal story, but then it just went in a different direction. Like they clearly in the point one, they set up that the FBI are going to go after him. So that was always there. But I guess I was hoping that they were going to come in as the Calvary at the end of the story. And we were going to get like two or three issues of this girl trying to like outsmart and outrun Carnage. Um, I, I guess I was kind of expecting that. And then John Jameson and then we're going to come in at the, you know, towards the end with the sound device or something and stop Carnage. So I guess because I had preconceived notions of the story based off of a little bit from the point one and from the beginning of where this story took place, I guess I was just thinking it wasn't going to go the route of just like, a bunch of action which they kind of do and not all of it i thought was very good um but it's still an interesting start i am curious to see where jerry conway takes this because like i said he's a phenomenal writer and i think mike perkins is a phenomenal artist so together i, I think they're building an interesting thing here i know a lot of you have talked about the dark hold in this story in my comment section before and i just never really knew what was being said because i think i maybe thumbed through this a couple years ago back when I first bought it. And then I always said, oh, we'll cover it on the last Carnage week, which is this, you know, this is our last Carnage week uh, in Summer of Carnage. So it, it, we're finally here. So I, I feel like I remember bits and pieces of this, but I still thought it was going to go in a more personal direction. And I think if I'm not mistaken, volume two does kind of start off like that with Carnage on a boat with a young lady and she has to kind of outsmart him, but they're on a small boat. So I think we're going to get that. So maybe I'll be happier after I read the second volume. But for this volume, I guess I was, since this character ties directly into Cletus's past, I thought there would be more of that to it, uh, but there really wasn't. So overall, I don't have a, a big, deep discussion about this because I think I covered everything that happens in this pretty much succinctly, which was it's, you know, him, it's Carnage being lured down, uh, you know, seemingly for a trap by the government, turns out as a double cross by this Gleason guy who works with a cult. And, uh, and that cult answers to a guy that I think we find out more about in the next volume or the next volumes uh, named Gregory or something like that. And, and so he gets led down in to fulfill this prophecy. He, cuts, he gets cut and bleeds on the book by the cult members. They all attack him and, and stab him like Caesar style. Um, but then he bleeds on the book and it corrupts everything. And then before he can escape, um, he actually, or Gleason, before Gleason can escape with the book, because he's like, oh, maybe I can figure this out and we can redo this and start over again. Uh, you actually have uh, one of the agents, I think either Manuela or Claire Dixon, like one of them, take a page from the book and rip it out uh, to prevent, you know, Carnage from knowing exactly what he's going to have to do now that he has this new power. So Carnage goes after and kills Gleason and takes the book back and disappears. Um, but we don't know where he's gone yet. We'll find out, I'm sure, in the next volume. But, uh, but the page is still missing. So he, wherever Carnage is, he still won't have all the answers. So I'm, I'm intrigued by the setup. Uh, I'm, I don't hate this book and I don't overly love it. I think there's good and uh, good in it, definitely. But things I also that I don't like, I won't say they're bad. I just, I really was hoping they would go in a, a different direction, more personal and peel back more layers from St. Estes. Um, and, they, and they didn't. I felt like there was a good opportunity there for that and they didn't do it. But hopefully they will in the future books. And if so, then, you know, I'll retract this or put my foot in my mouth but at least for this um i can tell that this was more about the setup of the dark hold and the story there and carnage having new abilities and that's clearly going to be the purpose of this book but hopefully there is still some personal stuff along the way uh so let me know what you think like with eddie in this i didn't really like the take on eddie here he definitely was a creepy guy he, he you couldn't trust him and i i don't know i feel like i feel like maybe that's in keeping with eddie at that point of time in the comics because he became toxin and you could tell Colin Bunn was trying to rebrand him and make him less villainous because Rick Remender I think kind of butchered Eddie and the top when he bonded with toxin and just wrote him poorly and awfully I think Colin Bunn tried to redeem that a little bit and I think Jerry is trying to do that a little bit but there's still remnants of Remender's Eddie in here too that Jerry's doing that I don't like uh, but maybe that's part of the transition and hopefully Eddie will get better as the books go on and as well as the personal stuff hopefully that gets better as it goes on too um, so let me know what you think of this book I, I you know I'm kind of in the middle on it I hate when I'm in the middle on things sometimes uh, because I feel like a lot of things nowadays uh, I'm in the middle on but it's because like I don't overly love things and I don't uh, overly hate things 
I just find them to be okay. And I felt this was okay. And so I'm going to stick to that. Like I, maybe this is like a, a seven out of 10 for me. It's a little bit higher than above average. You know, it's a, you know above average for me, but there was just a, enough in here to make me kind of go, I wish I, I hate doing that too. I hate saying, I wish they would do something different, but I felt like the book was setting up for something more personal and then just went off on this dark old thing. And I was like, ah, okay. So at the detriment of the more personal Cletus stuff, we're going to have to go in this new direction, which is fine, but I felt like the book was setting up a personal thing, and I felt like it didn't deliver when it could have. Um, so that's my big negative on it. Uh, but if you have different opinions on it, let me know down below. Let me know what you think of the artwork, because I like Mike Perkins, so I'm excited to read the next few ones. And I thought the covers of this series were fantastic, too. As I was flipping through the trade, I noticed the covers, and I was like, these are really neat, very stylized, uh, very creepy, kind of, you know, uh, body horror, some of them, and, and just kind of really uh, off-putting as well. So I kind of like that the covers painted a horror uh, image, but then when you read the book, you're thinking, okay, it is going to be horror because they're going to be in this mine and they're, and Carnage is going to kill them off one by one. And there was a few, there was like one issue that kind of had some of that. And then after that, it just kind of went into goofiness like and not, and not fun goofiness for me. So overall though, those are my thoughts. Uh, if you have different thoughts or same thoughts, let me know down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Uh, thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And next up, I will have a review or discussion of uh, Extreme Carnage Scream, which just came out, and I will give out the digital code. So make sure you tune into that episode, and the first person to put that digital code in in the next episode will get the comic book. So uh, if you do win the comic in the next episode, be sure to let us know in the comments down below of that one so we know who won it, and so we can say congrats and enjoy. Um, so yeah, that'll be coming up next. So thank you so much, and we will see you in that episode. Peace.